Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International. I'm Sarah Bulfat. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa returned to the kingdom following a visit to Egypt after receiving an invitation from the Egyptian President Abdel Fattah al Sisi, with the whom His Majesty held talks on the historic and fraternal bilateral relations, as well as the current situation and regional and international developments. His Majesty the King's representative for humanitarian work and youth affairs, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, hailed the new win achieved by Bahrain Victorious. He said the achievement reflects the great potential of Bahrain Victorious as well as the team ambitions plan to promote the kingdom and turn sports into a cornerstone of the 2030 Bahrain economic vision. His Highness Sheikh Nasser made the statement after Bahrain Victorious cyclist Sonny Cabarelli finished first in the annual Marco Panati Memorial race Emilia Pormigana, Italy. He hailed the win which he described as a catalyst which will further motivate Bahrain Victorious to continue its string of achievements in the upcoming cycling competitions. The first deputy chairman of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, the SCYS, chairman of the General Sports Authority and president of Bahrain Olympic Committee, Zahani Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa, expressed appreciation for the role played by the national media in supporting the programs and initiatives aimed at developing Bahraini youth and contributing to honing their skills so as to be able to better serve the society. Zahani Sheikh Khalid was speaking while receiving Information Affairs Minister Ali bin Mohammed Ramehi and the jury of the Yurt talent at home competition. As Hannah Sheikh Khalid commended the distinguished efforts exerted by the Information Affairs Ministry to promote the youth movement in the kingdom through its wide coverage of the youth events that contribute to highlighting the true image of Bahrain as a country that supports youth in various fields. Thanks to the care of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, the distinguished efforts of His Royal Highness Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, and the follow-up of His Majesty the King's representative for Humanitarian Work and Youth Affairs and SCYS Chairman Izhana Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa. Izhana Sheikh Khalid asserted that the media is an essential partner in developing various fields, particularly youth, which reflects positively on enhancing the prestigious reputation and status enjoyed by the kingdom in the youth field at the continental and international levels. In this regard, Izhana Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad affirmed the major role played by the media in covering the Your Talents at Home competition and projecting the real image of Bahraini youth's talents and great creative potentials, commending the distinguished efforts exerted by the event's jury to ensure its success. His Highness Sheikh Khalid stressed that the rapid developments witnessed by the media in the transmission of information, news and reports, especially at the level of social media platforms, are the weapon that must be used to serve Bahrain's progress march. Information Affairs Minister said that His Highness Sheikh Khalid's qualitative initiatives contribute to supporting youth and other members of the Bahraini society through creating opportunities for them to participate and to cre be creative in various fields. He affirmed the Information Affairs Ministry's great interest in covering events and competitions aimed at enriching the Bahraini youth movement, expressing pride in the ministry's keenness to harness all its potentials to cover the Your Talent at Home competition in a way that meets the aspirations of His Highness Sheikh. Khalid's aspirations and ensure the success of such a youth-oriented initiative. Members of the Your Talent at Home competition expressed deepest thanks to Azhana Sheikh Khalid for his trust and support, lauding his distinguished efforts to support Bahraini youth. The Speaker of the Representatives Council, Fawzia Zainal, received the Minister of Works, Municipality Affairs and Urban Planning, Assam Abdullah Khalaf. Zainal stressed the big strides made by Bahrain in the services and infrastructure field. She commended the directives of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa and the efforts of the government led by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, to boost citizens' welfare and ensure fast implementation of ongoing projects. She also praised the active role of the the Ministry of Works in implementing various services and infrastructure developmental plans to achieve citizens' aspirations. The President of the Cassation Court and Deputy Chairman of the Supreme Judicial Council, Abdullah bin Hassan al Bahrainin, virtually chaired the seventh meeting of the GCC Country's Supreme Court and Cassation Court's presidents. The meeting discussed the draft of the unified law system for Supreme Courts and Cassation Courts of GCC countries, Bahrain's proposal on information technology, and the use of artificial intelligence in courts' work, as well as a host of other proposals.
The Kingdom of Bahrain has chaired the meeting of the GCC Ministers of Education and the 21st meeting of the GCC Committee of the Ministries of Higher Education and Scientific Research, which were held virtually and attended by education ministers, various officials, along with the General Secretary of the GCC, Naif al Hajraf. The Minister of Education expressed thanks and appreciation to the leaderships of the GCC countries for their directives to support education in their countries as well as cooperation efforts between them. He praised the GCC countries' efforts to contain the pandemic and its effects on the educational sector across all levels. He affirmed that the sector is a top priority thanks to its importance in the development of societies. The Minister of Labour and Social Development and Chairman of the Board of Directors of the Labour Market Regulatory Authority, Jamil Ahmedan, hailed His Majesty the King's issuance of Decree by Law No. 16 of 2021, amending some provisions of the Labour Law and the Private Sector 36 of 2012. The amendment stipulates the prohibition of wage discrimination between male and female workers in labour of equal value, noting that this reflects His Majesty's keenness on consolidating the principle of equality and protecting the rights of all workers without discrimination, which is an approach that Bahrain has been keen on establishing within the system of human rights and legalizing with legislative tools to ensure its application. Hamedan stated that this amendment takes into account equality and justice, protects the rights of working women, strengthens the role of Bahraini women, especially in the productive sectors, and motivates them to work. The minister affirmed the validity of the article and its obligatory application in all establishments operating in Bahrain, stating that the Ministry of Labour and Social Development, through its supervision of the implementation of the labour law, will ensure the implementation of the article in accordance with the mechanisms in place, calling on all establishments to implement the wage system in accordance with this updated article. Two parliamentary committees have voiced deep concerns over the Qatari regime's discriminatory practices in the first ever legislative polls in the country. Dr. Mbarak El Murray has applied to run in the elections in the 16th constituency only to be excluded from the candidate's register without giving her any reasons. The Qatari authorities did not allow Dr. El Murray to challenge the arbitrary decision to bar her from running and participating in the parliamentary polls. In a joint statement, a human Rights Women and Childhood Committee condemned the arbitrary exclusion of Dr. Al Murray, which contravenes the principles of equality in exercising political and full citizenship rights. They stressed the necessity to allow all citizens, men and women in Qatar, to exercise their political rights through free and honest elections and challenge such decisions before the judiciary. They underlined the importance for Qatari women to exercise their political rights without any discrimination or violation of the principle of equality before the law. The state of Qatar had issues the law on parliamentary elections, given native citizens full right to run and vote in the elections, and granting some naturalized citizens the right to vote only, while denying others, Qataris, the rights either to run or vote. The committees condemned in their joint statement the discriminatory measure, which amounts to a blatant violation of citizens' inalienable right to exercise their political rights. They stressed people's legitimate right to exercise their political rights, including running and voting, which represents the cornerstone of democracy through legislations that stipulate equality between citizens and regulate rights without any arbitrary or illegal exclusion. The Ministry of Housing is continuing to allocate housing units from the Bahir project. It affirmed that the project represents one of the pillars of the Royal Directives to build 40,000 units and the housing program of the current government's plan to deliver 25,000 units. The Ministry said that the project is intended to increase the rate of housing services to citizens in a sustainable manner. It added that the project is being carried out in accordance with a set schedule and that those who have benefited from it have been notified while observing all necessary precautions. Meanwhile, the national vaccination campaign continues to witness a wide turnout of citizens and residents. The Ministry of Health announced that 1,160,375 had taken the first dose of the vaccine, while 1,104,103 had taken the second, and 271,422 had taken the booster dose. The Ministry renewed its call for the community to commit to all precautionary measures and take the initiative to register for the coronavirus vaccination. 
The Ministry of Health said today that the number of active coronavirus cases reached 779 with 107 recoveries and 72 registered new cases. 46 of the new registered cases are expatriates, 19 are contact of active cases and 7 are travel related. The Ministry urges everyone to comply with the guidelines issued by the National Task Force for Combating the Coronavirus.